Well, for those of you who have not seen my previous video about configuring the anti-spam from the GUI of the ESA, you'll find a link for the same at the top right corner of this video somewhere around this time. Okay, now jump into this video. I would like to let you know the agenda for this. We're going to look at uh, the commands we're going to use for the anti-spam engine how to check the status, how to check the config, and how to update, how to force the update, and what, what are the other commands and the easier way of running commands from the CLI. Well, let's jump right into it. But before that, if this is your first time on this channel, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you. Let's begin. We're gonna begin with the command that I love the most. So I, I usually run this command all the time and it gives me the status for the uh, anti-spam engine. And uh, yeah, we, I, I, I do have to run this command, uh, this command whenever I face any problem. Uh, you know, I see any problem with the anti-spam engine, it's, it's uh, blocked, it stopped working, or, or God knows what happened to it. So this is something you'd uh, usually run. And another way of running this command would be anti-spam status, and it gives you the same output. You should see that the rules are getting updated nicely and there's no problem with that. If you don't see that, then yeah, you gotta fix that. Another way of running this uh, command would be anti-spam status and then uh, uh, iron port. So if I run this command again, I see the same output, right? So you have iron port and you have multi-scan. And if I run multi-scan right now, I don't have it running. I don't have the keys installed for this. So therefore you see the feature key for multi-scan anti-spam has expired or is unavailable. Okay, so you can have both of them literally running at the same time on the ESA. So this is about the status. Now there's there are shortcuts for running other commands as well. For example, if you run the anti-virus status, uh, right? So you'll be able to see uh, the output like this for um, uh, for the antivirus status. Now there's a similar way in this as well. So you can do AV status. That's it's a short way of running this command. And therefore I prefer these uh, short commands to ASS, TATUS, and that's it, AV, STATUS, and you get the output right there and then. Okay, that's all about status. Um, there are a couple more commands available for the anti-spam engine. That you find here one is update and the other one is config now you can run the anti-spam update command that would be to make sure that you're able to update it another thing here that you see are important right in case you had multi-scan uh, enabled as well then you'll uh, you would have seen you will see a uh, multi-scan here just below our port Okay, now request updates uh, for import anti-spam. As there's nothing inside this box, that means it's asking us to choose it. So I'm gonna say import. It doesn't matter, it's not a problem, uh, uppercase or lowercase, it's case insensitive. So requesting updates for case rules, that's it. This is to make sure that you actually go ahead and manually uh, update the case rules. Otherwise, you really don't need to do it. It gets updated every five minutes. Now, another way of running this command would be if you want to force uh, the update for some reason. So you can use the force um, you know, command here. Although if I try to press the tab key here, I'm not able to auto-complete it. So you'll have to type it. And the same is true for, and okay, let me just show it to you once it completes. Come on, almost there. Okay, now, okay, good. The first parameter must be one of the following. Oh, my bad. Okay, anti-spam iron port, update force. Yes, go for it. Forcing updates for case rules. Anti-spam update, uh, iron port, and then force. The reason is that, uh, you know, it's just trying to make sure that, you know, hey, you want to update the uh, anti-spam, but which one? Okay, in this case, it's iron port, and that's why you see this kind of behavior here as well. Um, it's uh, it's asking us, okay, you want to go for iron port, although there, we don't have multi-scan, but this is how it is. So, yeah, that's that's the reason I have to mention iron port here. In case um, multi-scan, in case you want to force update multi-scan, you can just do uh, you know multi-scan right here, and that should do it. 
control C. Okay, that is to update uh, the anti spam engine. Okay, let me just hit enter. Okay, now let's configure the anti spam engine from the CLI. Oh, my bad. Fig. Now hit enter. It says that you got to go to the cluster level. Do you want to go to the cluster level? Do you want to switch the modes? Is basically what it says. So I say yes. Switch the modes to the cluster. Okay, good. So what do I do? I go to the set. I run the setup command. As you see right here, I hit enter and it says our import anti spam scanning is enabled. Would you like to use our import anti spam scanning? I say yes. I hit enter. Okay, the other options it asks me is never scan messages larger than. 2M, that's fine. I'm going to keep it at defaults and always scan messages smaller than 1M. I hit enter. Okay. Now, as you can see, don't get confused with this. When you say 2M, it says M for megabytes. And uh, that's what this M is. Okay. Please specify the R import anti spam scanning timeout. That is 60. That is fine. Okay, do you want normal settings uh, for the scanning or aggressive? And it, it actually explains the same right here. Scanning profile uh, used to blocks uh, spam with small potential for false positives. And scanning profile used to block spam that has more impact on spam detection than the normal profile with a larger potential for spam, uh, false positives. Well, I'm going to put it down in the description, a link that you know, explains the same or it's possibly going to be the same link that I talked about before so you can get all the information from there I hit enter because I just want to go with one I don't want to be aggressive you know just just stay with the normal one and that's it that's pretty much it with the config and uh, yeah if you want to disable it you can disable it from here itself so you can say anti-spam uh, config and uh, let's say setup I hit enter and you, you wanna you wanna you would you like to use uh, our import anti spam scanning? I say N, not necessarily uh, an uppercase N. I can do a lowercase N as well. I hit enter. Will no longer. So the system will no longer scan messages for spam using our import anti spam. Are you sure you want to disable it? Well, yes. Okay, you can do a do an uppercase Y or a lowercase Y. That's not a problem. I do that and our, our import anti-spam scanning has been disabled. Now, obviously I'll have to commit, right? There you go. Uh, disabled um, anti-spam and yeah, pretty much done. That's it. Okay, let me take it to the top now. Let's talk about the logs for the anti-spam. If I go to, if I run this command log config, I hit enter, and these are the logs that I've currently configured on my appliance. And this is what I'm interested in: anti-spam logs. Now, if you don't have these logs, there's no need to panic. All you to, all you need to do is just click a new, uh, and then go ahead and create the new log file, which is going to be of type uh, anti-spam. That's pretty much it uh, with the logs as I have it already configured. I'll say tail anti spam to check the latest logs in this. Now, when you run this command, it's important that you go to the machine mode. Otherwise, you won't be able to get the output for this command. So the default option selected is Y. So I hit enter and this is where I land. So these are the things that I'm seeing right now in these logs. Looking good, no problems there. The same way you can uh, check out the logs for anti-spam as well. In case you want to check um, the logs in relation to anti-spam about the updating of the rules and all that, you can grab, uh, let's say case, but I want to make it um, case insensitive and therefore um, hyphen I case from the updater logs. Right. So if I do that. Okay, it's going to give me all this information, right? It's fetching all the information about the case engine, which is uh, the anti spam engine. Now, in this case, we see all this output. It's fetching it from uh, it's fetching it from November, December, 2021. Now, I don't want to do all that. I'll just press press Control C. Let me just modify this a little bit. Um, I'll say 
June, which is, okay, today's June uh, 16, 17 or something like that. Okay, it's 17 actually. Yeah. So uh, I, I did a part of this video uh, yesterday. So <laughs> anyways, let me just hit enter. It's going to fetch me the case uh, details um, from these logs uh, from June 17. So this basically means that fetch the logs, which has June 17 in it. And uh, then whatever after that till case. Okay. So any log entry, which has these, uh, which has this pattern of June 17 first, and then case second, and then whatever in between will be, um, you know, printed out in the output. So you see all this information that, you know, uh, case was signal this and that case is updating, waiting for new updates, server manifest was signaled, processing files, started downloading files, waiting for download lock and so on. You see the, um, the server um you know url as well right so you get um, you can see all, all sorts of cool information from these logs and if you have any uh problems with your case engine your anti-spam engine this is where you um you know you go to and you grep accordingly and grep is um a command that you can use in very different ways to get uh the desired output that you really want now we're looking good here I think we can go ahead and check out the last part of this video, which is to implement the case engine, the anti-spam engine in the incoming mail policy. Well, the same would apply to the outgoing mail policy as well. And therefore, I'm just going to show you the um, incoming. That's it. Let's go ahead. Okay, let's implement the anti-spam in the incoming mail policies. Before that, let's check the uh, status for this. Okay, this is how it is at the moment. And uh, let's say I want to go ahead and I want to disable or enable it at the moment. I run anti-spam config and you see it's enabled at the moment. If I want to disable it, I can just disable it. Not required at the moment and I want to take time with that. So let's go to policy config. I want to make changes to the first one. So number one, it is selected by default and therefore I don't have to mention anything. I can just hit enter and that's it. If I wanted to, however, mention number two, then I'll have to mention number two here and then hit enter. But in this case, I'm going to go for incoming mail policies and therefore I just hit enter. Now, I tell you, this, uh, this output is actually beautiful, but however, I have actually zoomed into the terminal and therefore you see it like that. However, it's still kind of good. That's okay. So this is the name of the first incoming mail policy. As you can see, incoming mail policy configuration, right? Incoming mail policy number one, number two, number three, and so on. Also, I see that the second column is anti-spam, which says off here, off in the second one. Default, okay, what does default mean? It means it's following the default uh, policy, which is, I'm sorry, this one, right? And it has our import enabled in it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, enable it for the first one and make the changes accordingly. So I'm going to say edit. I want to edit which one. Uh, enter the name or a number of the entry you wish to edit. I want to edit number one. As you can see, the numbering also popped up now. I mention one, hit enter, and it says, okay, you got all these options. Now, what, what do I want to do? I want to go ahead and mention this option of anti-spam. I want to say anti spam hit enter okay i can go ahead and enable it there you go the threshold i want to keep it at 90 for this one and this is for positive spam right uh, go through this text uh yourself just just pause the video and uh you know this is in a nutshell this is for positively identified spam and it talks about 90 right the threshold for it and then what action do you want to take i want to go ahead and uh you know uh quarantine it uh yeah let's go ahead and quarantine it do you want to uh, archive messages identified as spam no i don't want to do that do you want to archive messages identified as spam no do you want to add text to the subject of the identified as spam uh prepend yes prepend spam yes that's what i want to do headers no special treatment uh, of uh, suspected spam, yes. If there's an email which is a suspected spam, then yes, I want to have some special treatment for it. Yes. So, what's the score you would like to set for our import anti spam suspect spam threshold? It's 50 by default. I'll keep it there. I don't want to make it aggressive or anything like that. Right. 
So I go for 50 and that's it. Now, what action do you want to take for it? I would actually like to deliver it, but I would like to, do you want to archive messages? No. Do you want to prepend? Yes, because I'm delivering it to the end user. I want to make sure that the end user understands that, oh, it's a suspected spam. So what does this actually mean, prepending the subject? It means whatever the subject is, okay, invoice for our deal. So if this is the subject of the email, and if it is identified as a suspected spam, then that email subject will be actually uh, prepended with this suspected spam and then the rest of the uh, subject. Okay, I just enter, do you want a suspected spam sent to external quarantine or this? Okay, no, do you want to add a custom? No, uh, I just want to go for the default ones in this case. Okay, now it is enabled, I hit enter and I see our import right now, right in front of it. Okay, that was pretty simple, right? But I, I completely understand. If you want to do it from the GUI, uh, yeah, I would actually recommend doing it from there. It's easier and it's a lot, um, yeah, it's actually a lot easier to, to implement it from there. Although I, I, I usually do it um, from the GUI, but I don't face any problems doing it from here as well. So it completely depends on your convenience and how you want to do it. So completely your choice, please go for it. Although it's still not implemented. So how do you make sure that it's implemented? Obviously by making sure that you run the commit command and always make sure you put in the comments, enabled anti-spam for the first incoming mail policy, although you should name it here, but I'm just, you know, doing that for the sake of the video. Okay. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess I've covered almost, uh, um, everything when it comes to the anti-spam configuration or status update and this and that, uh, from the CLI, um, in case you have any questions or you, you feel like I missed out on anything, just put it down in the comments section. And uh, yes, if this is your first time again, then please subscribe and like the video. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Keep sharing and you have a great time ahead. Thank you. Goodbye.